Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. Hi, I'm Waldo Cabrera, and I'm here with Congressman Steve Israel. He's the representative for New York's 3rd Congressional District, looking for another term in office. 2001 was your first uh, that's opportunity. That's right. Yes, sir. That's, that's a long time. Some say it's too long. Some say it's not long enough. Why should your voters give you another term in office? Well, because I've been a relentless advocate for middle-class families uh, throughout this congressional district, uh, a relentless advocate for veterans. Uh, one of the things I'm most proud of is the fact that uh, we've secured uh, $7.6 million for the veterans I represent. Uh, and uh, I just work hard uh, for the folks I represent. Uh, we may not always agree on every issue. I mean, if you come to Thanksgiving Day at my house, even my family doesn't agree on every issue. Um, but the thing that I appreciate hearing the most is uh, you work hard for us. Uh, you got a veteran's benefit, uh, a veteran's payment uh, that I couldn't get. Uh, and you stand up for middle class values. And that's what this community is all about, middle class values. In every uh, race, there, the major concerns are jobs, taxes, and lately it's just been this health care issue. Um, would you be able to talk about where, what you've done and what you will continue to do on, on those three issues? Sure, absolutely. Uh, look, on jobs, uh, this recovery that people read about, they're not feeling sufficiently. Uh, and the reason for that is, number one, uh, we haven't created the kind of job growth in the middle class than we, than we should. People are working harder than ever, uh, but their paychecks aren't reflecting that. Uh, and so I think that Washington, while the Congress has never created a job, there are things that we can do uh, to expand jobs. For example, uh, infrastructure. Uh, if you take a look, you know, I'll never pretend to be the smartest member of Congress, Waldo, although if you listen to many of my colleagues, you know the competition ain't that stiff. Uh, but I know economic history, and you look at economic history in this country, when the federal government partners with the private sector in building things, in building bridges and tunnels, uh, in modernizing our infrastructure, it creates jobs. And yet we have a Congress now that instead of choosing to build, chose to shut down the federal government for two weeks. That's not how you create jobs. That's how you create partisanship. So we need to do more in terms of job creation by dedicating ourselves to investments in infrastructure. And the second thing that I'm working on is uh, dedicating ourselves to uh, new uh, technologies. For example, Alzheimer's research uh, and cybersecurity. Those are enormous areas of potential for Long Islanders. We used to be the defense capital of the world. Now I want us to be the Alzheimer's research capital and the cyber defense capital of the world. With uh, our health care uh, issue, it's, it's a topic uh, across the nation. What went wrong? What happened and how can we fix what sure. happened? A lot went wrong. Uh, number one, the rollout was horrific. Let's acknowledge that. Uh, and then when we acknowledge that it's horrific, there are two things we can do about it. We can politicize it and try and repeal the entire thing 50 times, which Republicans tried to do, or we can fix it. Uh, I prefer to try and fix it, and I have. I'll give you some examples. Uh, there was an interpretation after the Affordable Care Act was, uh, was effectuated uh, that volunteer fire departments might be subject to the mandate. Well, that's just silly. Uh, one of the mayors uh, of a village that I represent, uh, Mayor Levy, called me and said, can we fix that. I spoke to the White House directly. I said, this will not stand. We need to fix it. And we fixed it. So we have to continue to fix it and make it better. But repeal it? No. Uh, because when you repeal it, number one, you go back to the days when insurance company uh, could tell you, uh, even though you paid your premiums, we're not going to cover your, your sickness or your disease. If you repeal it and you're a woman who has breast cancer, your insurance company can say, too bad, we're not covering your breast cancer. Uh, and your insurance company can impose lifetime caps on the payments for your coverage. Why on earth would we want to go back to those days? So let's focus on continuing to fix it uh, and stop trying to repeal it 50 times. You brought up a point, and it's about the partisanship. Uh, it seems that Congress is at a, at a standstill uh, because of it. Uh, you, in the years that I've known you, have, have come across as, as, a, as a guy that wants to include everyone. What are you doing 
to try to break some of that gridlock? Two things. Number one, I started something called the Center Isle Caucus in the House of Representatives that brings Democrats and Republicans together uh, to talk not about what we disagree on, but to figure out what we can agree on. And uh, that was a very refreshing and almost liberating experience. Uh, secondly, uh, when I disagree with President Obama, I fight him. Just as when I disagreed with President Bush, I fought him. Uh, and so when, the president want, when President Obama wanted to terminate the Bush tax cuts for everybody, uh, uh, making over $250,000 because he said that $250,000 made you rich, I said to him, literally, $250,000 may make you rich in Huntington, West Virginia, not Huntington, Long Island. And you know what? I got him to compromise, and I got my colleagues to compromise. We need to stand up for our values, but understand that there's a middle ground always, and I constantly search for that middle ground. You just came back from Israel? I did. Why are they so important? Every time we hear they're an important ally, why are they so important, and what did you learn there that's going to help us as Americans? They're an important ally because Israel and the United States share the common threat of terrorism, uh, whether it is Al-Qaeda, Hamas, Hezbollah. Uh, Israel has to deal with terrorism every single day. We have to protect ourselves against terrorism every single day. They are also surrounded uh, by regimes uh, that are dictators. They are surrounded by regimes that uh, teach kids how to blow things up instead of how to put things, uh, put things together. And so we share common values and uh, democratic principles. And I feel very strongly uh, that uh, the world is better off when you have a strong Israel, which means a more secure America. There, it's, some people do not like getting a 0% rating for anything. But you <laughs> got a 0% rating from the NRA. <laughs> um, but you also got a 100% rating from the, pro, uh, from the gun control mm -hmm. lobby. Uh, it seems to be polar opposite here. Um, are, are you a threat in any way to those that, that want to have guns? Are you a absolutely no guns kind of guy? Or where do you stand no. on this? Look, I do not believe that the government should take guns away from people. I do believe that the government and the private sector should do everything we can to make guns safer. Uh, and so when it comes to uh, assault weapons, you know, on our streets, I do not believe that we need assault weapons on our streets and in our schools. I oppose that. Uh, when it comes to common sense safety measures, we ought to do those things. Uh, and in fact, I had a bipartisan bill with a Republican congressman named uh, Howard Coble from uh, North Carolina uh, that uh, would not allow uh, 3D printed guns to go through metal detectors onto planes. I don't care whether you have a zero with the NRA or a hundred with the NRA. You don't don't want plastic guns on planes that can fire a bullet. So where I can find bipartisan cooperation on that issue, I will. Uh, but I strongly support gun safety measures without taking guns away from uh, uh, Am Americans. And the final question is, uh, we, I was just in Wyandanche, a former community mm -hmm. that you represented, and they were, they were singing your praises about a program that you initiated. A, it, it was a, a farmer's market. Yeah. Uh, that seems to be such a small little thing for a congressman to just go in and, and put a farmer's market. Why are, why are so, so, such programs important to you, and do you do that everywhere? Well, first of all, food costs in wine dance were very high because it didn't have uh, a, a lot of uh, accessibility to supermarkets. And so my thought was, well, why don't we just get local farmers to bring their produce to wine dance and sell it uh, to people? Uh, on the issue of why are those little things important, I have a philosophy that I teach my staff. We're never going to change the world. We have to change it one person at a time. Literally, one person, at one veteran at a time. Uh, one person in wine dance who can get less expensive food. One farmer who makes a little more money. One middle class family at a time. That's what I believe in every day. Can't change the world, but if you change it one person at a time, you change it for that person. Congressman, thank you for your time. Thank you, Waldo. I wish you luck Great in the upcoming with election. You. Thank you, sir.